Back in our discussion of measuring, we already spent some time talking about areas, but in those discussions, we always took the areas as something we already knew or were just given. In this lecture, we're going to take a step back from that and look at ways that we can calculate the areas of figures given information about their dimensions. So to do this, we're going to start in the same place that we did when we talked about units of measurement. We'll define the area of a rectangle as being the number of unit squares that it takes to cover the shape. So if it takes L boxes just to line the bottom row, and it takes W of those L length rows to stack all the way over to the other side of the figure, then we know that there must be L times W boxes in the shape. And that's our formula for the area of a rectangle. It's length times the width. All right, now in the special case, right, let's say we have a square. In the special case of the figure is a square, then we know that both sides are the same. So if we call the length, that common length, S, then the area becomes S times S, which is just S squared. Now suppose we have a parallelogram. Right, to find its area, I'm going to start by drawing in the height of the figure. That's a line from the top down to the bottom that's perpendicular to both sides. And I'm going to draw this particular one down from the left-hand vertex. Now, this cuts a triangle out of the left-hand side of the figure, specifically a right triangle. So hold on to that. I'm going to add a couple more things. Next, I'm going to extend the bottom side and draw another height from that vertex. Yes, it's outside of the figure, and, and that's okay. Now, notice that because the sides are parallel, these angles are the same. Those are corresponding angles. Obviously, the right angles are the same. And these two sides are also the same because those are both heights, and the height is, is constant across the whole figure. So now we know by the angle-angle side theorem that these two right triangles are congruent. And if they're congruent, they have the same shape. And if they have the same shape, their areas must be the same. Now, since the original parallelogram and the rectangle that I formed by repositioning that triangle are made up of the same components, they must have the same area. The area of the parallel, uh, the area of the rectangle is the base times the height, this base up here, which means that is our formula for the area of a parallelogram. So how about a triangle? All right, to find the area of a triangle, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to make a copy of that triangle. Right now, just on his face, because I copied the triangle exactly, these two triangles must be congruent. All right now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something very similar to what I did with the parallelogram. I'm going to rotate that triangle 180 degrees. And I'm going to shift it over. So it's like I'm gluing it on to the top of the other triangle. Now, look at what happens. Because these two angles are congruent, the outer, uh, the two horizontal sides must be parallel. And because these two angles are congruent, the two semi-vertical, two up and down sides must also be parallel, which means that this, this figure that I made by combining these two identical triangles together is a parallelogram. We already know what the area of a parallelogram is. It's the base times the height. Because both of our triangles are the same, each one of them must be making up half of that parallelogram's area. So our formula for the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. I just got one more here for us to look at, a parallelogram. And this one, uh, this one we're actually going to have to get a little, a little more creative with. Uh, I've got the, the key parts drawn in. I've got the height, and we need to know the length of the two bases. Those are the two parallel sides. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw in 
another height. And I, I've drawn both of these so that they, they touch these two upper vertices. Now notice what this has done. I've, I've taken this um, parallelogram and I've split it into two right triangles and a rectangle. Okay, so, so what I want to do is I want to find the area of, of these individual three pieces, add them together, that's going to give me my formula. So here's what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to need to add a couple of variables here. I'm going to call uh, the length of or the base of the left-hand triangle A and the base of the right-hand triangle B. I know they look the same in this figure, but they may not be. Right? It, it's possible that, that one side is really skewed way far over. They don't have to come out the same. Okay, so what, what are my areas? The area of the left-hand triangle here is one-half A times H. The area of my rectangle is B2 times H. Remember, B1 is the whole thing down here, not just the, that middle piece. And the area of the right-hand triangle is one-half B times H. Okay, I'd like to combine these things together into one fraction. So to do that, I need to have a common denominator. I'm going to leave the one-half AH and the one-half BH alone. And I'm going to make this middle part 2B2H over 2. All right, now I can combine all of these things together. This is AH, not AB, AH plus 2B2H plus BH over 2. Okay, now let, let's clean this up a little. I, I, I've got an H that all three of the top parts have in common, and I've got that 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor that out. H over 2 times A plus 2B2 plus B. All right, now I know this is a little unusual. This is kind of the creative step. I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to make this H over 2 times A. A plus B2 plus B plus B2, right? I took this, this 2B2 here, and I split it up into B2 plus B2, All right? This part here is this plus this plus this. That's just B1. That's the length of the bottom base, All right? So my formula, this is my final result here, area equals h over 2 times b1 plus b2. Or if, if I rewrite this just a little bit, I'm going to do this because this is how I remember this formula. This is h times b1 plus b2 over 2. So the way I remember this, remember that the, the area of a parallelogram is just base times a height. Well, to get the area of a parallelogram, it's the height times the average of the two bases. That's the, that's the little internal mnemonic in my head right, that I use to help me remember that formula. All right, so I've, I've summarized everything that we talked about here. Right? These are the five formulas uh, that we covered in this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to take a look uh, at how we can use these formulas to find the areas of irregular shapes Right, that we don't just have some formula we can plug numbers into.